Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the director of Kahala and owner of Bar Leather Apron, Leather Soul, and Bar Maze. He is Tom Park, and today we are going beyond small businesses. Hey, Tom, welcome to Beyond the Lines. How's it, Rusty? Thanks for having me. Fun Tom, to see you, uh, I am very proud to be a Kahala brand ambassador. I love your Kahala shirts, as you can see. And Tom, I want to ask you, why is Kahala so popular? Well, I hope it's becoming popular. Uh, <laughs> we've been around since 1936. We're the original manufacturer of uh, Aloha shirts. So we have a rich history. We have a, a heritage and history that, that goes for many years. Um, we have original art that dates back to the 30s and 40s. And, you know, we're made right here in Hawaii. We're locally owned and operated, and we're just a, you know, great company. Um, what, you, you have such a history, like you said. How do you keep and make everything look so cool and relevant with, while still honoring the history of Kahala? Well, I'm trying, Rusty. I'm trying. Um, you know, as I said, we, we do have a lot of original art that dates back from the 1930s, 40s, 50s and, and such. And, and we're always looking back to our archives and pulling original art that we've used in the past and kind of updating it for today's looks. Um, actually, a, a great example is this shirt that I'm wearing right now. It's um, the art on it is from the 40s, but we re-digitalized it. We changed the colors. We changed the scale. And I have it on uh, what, uh, recycled polyester stretch fabric that's kind of like a dry fit material. So it's really cool and lightweight and, and moisture wicking. So, you know, it, it's just really comfortable and modern. So it's, um, it's kind of the best of the old and the new in one. Now, Tom, you've built a great team of employees. Your, your team members are fantastic. And when you first came in, as the director of Kahala during that first year, how much did you grow the brand during that first year? And what were some specific things that you did? Well, you know, Kahala has been a pretty steady company all these years. And, and I was fortunate to come in at a time when things were, you know, it, it was an exciting time. We're coming out of COVID. Um, I was able to kind of implement some, some new marketing initiatives. Um, and I ended up growing the company about 50% my first year. Um, you know, my main focus was really the marketing and also kind of keeping the products relevant to, the, to today's consumers. Um, I was able to kind of work on some collaborations with some major brands um, through some of my relationships uh, with Leather Soul. So, you know, it's an exciting time for Kahala. Um, last year was great and this year is going to be even better. Well, I got to say, your, your Kahala employees, they better appreciate you as the leader because you've, you've, every business that you've done, I mean, you've achieved major success. And Tom, I want to ask you about your co-owner, Justin Park. I mean, you both are the co-owners of Bar Leather Apron, which is a two-time James Beard nominee, and you guys got got honored as the 42nd best bar in North America. I mean, that is incredible. How, why do you and Justin work so well together? You know, I, I, I truly believe in surrounding yourself with great people and, and Justin Park is, is truly one of the best bartenders in the world. You know, he's, he's won many international awards. He's represented the US in international competitions you know he's just got so much talent so you know i was fortunate enough to meet justin he was a customer of mine at leather soul he was buying shoes for his wedding and we kind of became friends um you know talking about whiskey and, and whatnot and and i had him uh come and do some 
events at my store for some local VIPs and and it was a hit, you know. Um back then cocktails were still kind of gaining popularity. Um and my friends and customers drank his cocktails and were blown away. And just uh, you know, they haven't tried an old fashioned before. So, you know, it was just an instant hit and we just became friends and you know, we were just talking one day like, "Hey, I can make cocktails. You know, you can handle the business side. You always have the customer base." We should just open a bar together. And that was back in 2015-ish, I think. And uh, yeah, we, we traveled the world and, and went to some of the best bars and got some ideas. And, and we opened uh, BLA back in January 2016. Well, Bar Leather Apron is absolutely beautiful. And I mean, you guys have really set the standard here. And you both are also co-owners of one of my favorite restaurants in Hawaii, Bar Maze. I mean, you have such a great team of employees there, and you guys literally strive for that superior discipline details that I talk about in my books. Why is Bar Maze so popular and so successful right now? Again, it's, it's just the people. Uh, like I said, uh, I like to surround myself with the best people. Um, we are fortunate enough to be introduced to Chef Key, who was a chef at a Michelin star restaurant in California. And he came down and, and we met and we instantly hit it off. And he liked what we were doing and our vision. And uh, it, was, it was just a great um, partnership. Um, and, you know, we're just trying to do what we want to do, basically, um, if that makes any sense. We're not trying to you know, appease anybody. We're trying to put out what we believe is, is the best. And our concept is, is matching pairing cocktails with food. You know, you see a lot of tasting menus of wine and food, but we wanted to do something different and unique. And especially because, you know, we have Justin uh, making the cocktails. Um, we wanted to do a pairing with cocktails and food. So that's what we're doing. And, and it's going pretty well. And, and you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's your favorite restaurant. Well, Tom, like you said, Chef Key is absolutely brilliant. Now, what are some of your favorite dishes at Bar Maze from, from Chef Key? Oh, man. You know, it, he's so talented. And everything tastes amazing. Um, I would have to say scallops. Um, he does a, like a seared scallop dish with um, this uh, butter sauce, and, and you can get caviar and put it on top, and then um, we have this special bread from the bread shop in Kamaki. Um, and you just take that bread and just dip it in the sauce, put some caviar on it. Oh, man, it's so good. I totally agree with you. I mean, the scallops and the, the caviar option. I mean, it, I mean, it's I get I'm getting excited right now, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tom, you are also the owner of Leather Soul. Can you explain to our viewers what Leather Soul is and, and why it became such a successful business? Yeah, so I was always into shoes, Rusty. I don't know if you remember when, when I was playing tennis, I always had to get the newest Andre Agassi Nike shoes. Um, but in college, I actually worked part-time at a high-end men's dress shoe store. And I started to kind of appreciate dress shoes, not just sneakers. and I enjoyed selling the shoes and I enjoyed learning about the shoes and whatnot. And I told myself one day in the back of my head, Hey, I'd like to open my own shoe store one day. And, and, you know, it's kind of one of those pipe dreams. And, you know, after college, I, I worked in finance and worked in some sales. And then my grandmother, who I was very you know, close with passed away. And before she did, she, she told me to follow my dreams and, and be happy. And, you know, it, it sounds kind of generic saying it out loud, but it, it, it's really truthful. And when you hear somebody saying that, you take it to heart. So I, I quit my job, I uh, took out some loans, I got some credit card debt. Um, and then I opened Leather Soul back in 2004 as a one-man operation in the Topa Center downtown. And, you know, I, I, I kind of did things out of the box. Um, it was just me in the store and I was I was doing some collaborations with the shoe brands, making my own exclusive designs. Um, I was kind of, the internet was kind of not what it is today. And, and, and blogging was kind of starting to come out. And, and 
online forum. So I was, I was on there kind of talking about shoes and, and kind of being the expert on these shoes. And I built kind of a following online that way. And then I had the Japanese customers who were coming to Hawaii. It's something that, you know, we have fortunate for us, we have that, that market here in Hawaii. So I focused my, my efforts towards the Japanese. Um, and I just, you know, hustled and grew the business. And, and, you know, at one point I had three stores, one store in Beverly Hills, two stores in Hawaii. And yeah, it was a great ride, but you know, it wasn't without its ups and downs for sure. Tom, you, I mean, that's incredible how you had that popular store in Beverly Hills. And who were some of the famous celebrities that wore your shoes? You know, I, I wasn't there often, but um, we did have uh, some celebrities like um, Will Smith, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, we had some um, NBA players and, and athletes. And, and um, yeah, it was fun. You know, we're right, right in Beverly Hills. We had a real deal drive address, so we had a lot of people in the entertainment industry, and, and it, it was fun. Wow, you got to feel so proud about that. I mean, that's incredible. And Tom, I mean, as a business owner, you've, I mean, you've achieved some of the highest highs in business. Now, besides COVID, what would you say was the lowest point you experienced in business? Oh. It was actually in 2014, and you know, I I don't talk about this much. Um, I, I don't like to talk about the hardships, um, but um, in 2014, the perfect storm kind of hit. Um, we had some uh, issues with the supply chain. We had some leather shortages, which led to um, inventory shortages. Um, the yen went from 80 something to the dollar to 120 to the dollar. And then my Beverly Hills stores uh, went out of business basically. Um, you know, the manager that was running it kind of wasn't doing a good job and, and kind of let it go. And so all these things happened all at the same time. And, and man, it was, it was rough. It was um, my lowest low. I, I, I almost went bankrupt back then. And, and um, you know, fortunately for me, um, through some of my friendships and relationships, I was introduced to a very successful local businessman who came in and, and kind of helped me to kind of analyze my business and what I was doing wrong and kind of helped me uh, reform my business and, and be a lot more conservative and, and, and smart with my business. Um, and it took about two years to, to kind of clean everything up and, and get back on track and just, just scrap my way back. You know, it, it wasn't easy, um, but I was able to scrap my way back. Um, like I said, I closed a store in California, focused on Hawaii and just kind of went back to basics. And, you know, after two years of scrapping, I was able to kind of stabilize my business. And, but yeah, I mean, 2014, it was, it was rough. It was tough. Tom, I often find that sometimes people are very undisciplined uh, during times of success were were you undisciplined when when you were really experiencing a lot of success yeah for sure you know i started my business in 2004 i was uh, 26 years old i was young with with no experience and and i grew my business you know i doubled my business every year and i became very successful and um you know i i i spent frivolously and you know, I overstaff, you know, and, and um, I, I wasn't smart with the business and, and I was buying too much inventory. I was doing a lot of things that I shouldn't have. Um, so for sure, it, it's easy to, um, to kind of be frivolous and, and, and not smart, I guess. And, and luckily for me, I was able to learn uh, from my mistakes and, 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 and kind of turn things around. So, yeah. Well, Tom, I, I know that you're an inspiration to so many business owners and entrepreneurs because you've experienced so many things. And thank you for sharing about uh, that major challenge that you experienced in 2014. And Tom, you have both of my books. And actually, you were one of the first to get my first book when it first came out. And what are some things that you liked about the books that stood out to you? You know, 
I actually lived through your book, right? Because a lot of the the stories in your book were some of my friends and some of my uh, teammates and whatnot. So it, it was so much fun to read these stories and these behind the scenes uh, stories. Um, but no, I mean, obviously about resilience, right? Um, I, I always say like, um, once you know that you can get back from something, you can do it again. So, you know, I, I, I've been through that, that tough time, 2014, 2015, you know, things were going great and then COVID hits, but, you know, I, I've been through it before and I, I, I fought my, my way back. So I knew I could do it again. So, you know, resilience was, was something that that's very important to me. Um, but actually the one story that really sticks out is, is the story of Mikey McKinnon. Um, you know, I played against him in the juniors. He was obviously much better than me and, and younger than me. I actually played more with his older brother, Robbie, but um, just to hear that story um, of the state championship final, him losing six love, six love. And then, you know, you going on the court and asking him how he's feeling. And, and the first thing that he says is how is his team doing? And I just thought that was so cool because you know, I am a proud Iolani grad and, and the one team spirit is so important to me in my life and in my businesses. So just that that's that was just amazing. Oh, I like that you brought up resiliency and the Mikey McKinnon story. And Tom, yeah, I mean, you you're someone that is all about that superior culture of excellence. And that that's what you strive for. That's what that's your standard in your businesses. Can you share with me? what that culture entails you know tennis is an individual sport but you know with high school tennis and and college tennis you get to be part of a team and and you know just just for me relationships are so important um without relationships like i wouldn't be where i am today um and i'm always uh i'm a firm believer that you treat people the way that you want to be treated you do right for people and when you need help, they'll do right for you. So, you know, I always try and keep my relationships very dear and, and near to my heart. Um, do what I can for people, whether, you know, if they're my my teammates or my employees or, or you know, my, my kids on the tennis team, you know, you want to do the best for them. And when they need help, help them. Um, do what you can to support them because one day you're going to need help. You're going to need their support. And if you are good to them, they're going to be good to you. So, you know, relationships are something that that are really important to me. Um, I learned that early on um, before Leather Soul when I was working in finance. Um, uh, a person who I kind of consider to be one of my mentors taught me that. And, uh, you know, to this day, I just try and do what I can for people because um, it's, it's just good to help people and be good to people. I completely agree with you, Tom. And Tom, you have a beautiful family, and I know every member of your family, your your daughter, Maddie, your son, Jaden, and your wife, Lori. I mean, what is, what's the biggest thing you admire about your wife, Lori? We're opposites. <laughs> so, you know, Without Lori being the kind of the rock, I mean, I, I couldn't do what I'm doing now, you know, when I was, when we were just married and, and, and I said I was going to open my shoe store. She was the one with the solid accounting job and, and, and supported me when I was doing crazy things. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm so blessed and, and I appreciate what she does. And, and it's not easy to be a wife of a small business owner, that's for sure. Well, I know Tom. I, I've known you for so many years, and yeah, you you're very lucky to have Lori. I mean, she is she is your rock for sure. And I I coach your son Jaden in private tennis lessons for some years now, and you know Tom, he's going to be trying out for the Iolani boys varsity team. You were on the Iolani boys varsity varsity team. You were a solid player. You went on to play for the University of Hawaii men's tennis team. What, what do you feel is the toughest part about playing tennis? Well, first of all, I, I didn't really play for UH. I, I sat on the bench and I watched the, the starters play. Let's put it that way. Um, but no, tennis, you know, tennis is such, 
a difficult sport because it's so mental. You know, I, I'd like to say it's 80% mental, 20% physical. You're on the court and you're just battling against your opponent and, and just all these thoughts are going through your mind. And, and sometimes it's hard to kind of control your emotions and whatnot. So, you know, I, I love that my son's playing tennis because it teaches him that mental game. And then I also love that he plays basketball and football because he gets to kind of, you know, experience the team atmosphere and, and how everybody has a role. So, you know, tennis is just such a mental struggle, but I think it's great. I think everybody should play a, a individual sport and a team sport to kind of learn both sides. Well, Jaden is definitely a boy with great character, and that's uh, that's all because of you and Lori. I mean, you guys are his first coaches as parents. And Tom, you're also the head coach for the Iolani Boys JV tennis team and the assistant coach for the Iolani Boys varsity tennis team. What is it about coaching that you love so much? You know, some of my best experiences were through tennis, um, playing tennis at Iolani, playing tennis at UH, all the tournaments I played in the juniors. You know, I, I still have so many friends from tennis. I still play tennis every week on Sundays with all my tennis buddies. So tennis is obviously a very important part of my life. And, and I've learned so much from tennis. And I, I just, I really enjoy working with the kids and seeing them improve and, and seeing them experience that. And, and it's something that, you know, I started a few years back um, thinking that, you know, I was going to coach my son, Jaden, but then he actually took a break from tennis. I think I was coaching him a little too hard. <laughs> so that's about the time that I, I handed him off to you. But, you know, I continue to teach um, and coach at Iolani and, 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 you know, it's just so fulfilling when, when the boys just, like you and, and and listen to you and appreciate you and and you know i've been through it all so hopefully i can kind of share some of my knowledge and hopefully some of the boys that i coach continue to play tennis and and one day i can play with them you know when, when they're 40 years old and i'm 70 years old so that's kind of what i'm looking forward to well tom you're definitely making a positive impact in business and in sports and i don't know how you find time to do everything that you do with your businesses and to take time coaching the Iolani teams. But if, in terms of leadership, what do you feel are some things that the greatest leaders do? You know, I think passion is, is very important. Um, I think if you're passionate about something and you can share your passion with your employees and your teammates, they'll kind of get passionate about it too and they'll get on your team and, and they'll be all excited to help you. So, you know, going back to my point about relationships, you know, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I have great teams in every business, um, Leather Soul, Bar Leather Apron, Bar Maze and Kahala. I have great support, um, great people around me and, and without them, I couldn't do what I'm doing. And, and um, you know, like I said, it's just treating people right and appreciating them and then, getting the best people around you. It makes it a lot easier. I, Tom, I love that you brought up passion. And I wanna, I wanna ask you about the importance of communication because, I mean, obviously to be successful, you, you gotta communicate very well and you do. So tell me, I mean, for me as a, as a leader, I always said that I don't give good feedback or bad feedback, I give honest feedback. What are your thoughts about communication? Uh, it's definitely important to be in constant communication with people and, and letting them know how you feel. Um, you know, I always, I, I definitely try and tiptoe when things are bad, but I try and turn it into a learning opportunity. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's getting more and more difficult for me even because I have so many businesses that I kind of manage, but, you know, just being in contact with each one, I touch each one every day, you know, I'm, I'm at Leather Soul every morning, then I go to Kahala, then I'm talking with my partner, Justin, and just kind of keeping, keeping engaged with everything as much as possible. It is getting harder. And I, I think I'm pretty much maxed out right now. But, um, but luckily, like I said, I have a great team around me that 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 I can lean on. So I'm very fortunate. 
Now, Tom, I want to ask you about risk because people that are successful in business, they're they're willing to take calculated risks to be better. They're they're never complacent. And obviously, with your businesses, Bar Leather Apron, Bar Maze, Kahala, Leather Soul, you, you're taking calculated risks. Tell me about that. Definitely. Um, you have to take risks. Um, you know, as I get older, I have to take much more calculated risks. But um, risks are, are, you can't succeed without taking some risks. Um, you know, like I said, um, I have people around me supporting me. And, and one thing that I like to do is take quick action. So if I have an idea, I like to jump on it. And that's kind of what I did my whole career. Um, if there's an opportunity, you, you jump on it and, and take that risk because before you know it, somebody took that opportunity. So, um, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've had to kind of tone it down here at Kahala because, you know, being on this side, on the brand side, it takes a lot, a lot longer to make a, a Loa shirt than you might think. So, you know, I have all these ideas. I have all these great, you know, products that I want to do, but it, it, it takes literally a year to make. So I've had to learn to kind of step back and kind of, learn the process and be more patient. Um, but now I'm taking bigger risk because a new product might not come out for a year. So um, yeah, um, it, it's, it's, it's been interesting and fun and, and I really enjoy it. So Tom, right there, you said the process is about a year for an Aloha shirt. Why is that? What, what, what goes on during that process? You know, there's so much involved, right? It's, it starts with the art. And we have a great team of artists here in the office that are constantly drawing art and coming up with new ideas. So that process takes a while. And then we have to go back and forth with the factory that creates the fabric in Japan. And once that fabric is, is approved, then we need to order the fabric. It needs to be made. And that takes a lot of time. And then that fabric needs to be shipped to Hawaii, coordinated with all our sewers and and then all the marketing efforts for the prints. And it, it's just a lot more goes into it than you would think. So it's, it's generally about a year to get a, a new shirt to the consumer. Wow. Tom, I want to ask you one more question before we wrap up. What's a valuable lesson you learned in life so far? Never give up. You know, it's, 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 it's kind of generic, but be resilient, you know, and, and, and once you come back from failure, you know you can do it again, right? So just keep on chugging. Oh, you're so right about that. I mean, after your experience in 2014, basically hitting rock bottom and then COVID happening, I mean, you're just like, I'm going to get through this, right? Yeah, COVID uh, didn't seem as bad, but, you know, it, it's still, still tough. But, you know, I know I can get back and then. We are coming back right now and things are looking good. Well, Tom, you are a very highly respected leader in our community. And I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. No, thank you, Rusty. I appreciate it. And I'll, I'll see you on the courts. Definitely. Thanks, Tom. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. <clears throat> And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Tom and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.